This is the second in a series of three videos that are designed to help people understand the concept of Theranostics and its application in the field of nuclear medicine. The previous video gave a brief overview of what Theranostics is. This video will examine the application of Theranostics in more detail. To simplify everything as much as possible, this video will discuss Theranostics in two sections. The first will be diagnostic imaging and the second will be therapy. Diagnostic imaging is the first step of the Theranostic process. This can involve modalities such as ultrasound, MRI and CT. But for the sake of this video, we will only be looking at nuclear medicine as the imaging modality. Nuclear medicine has the ability to image the functional pathways of the body using specially designed traces. These traces work in one of two ways. The first are radiochemicals. These mimic substances naturally used in the body and follow the natural biological pathways. The second group are radiopharmaceuticals. These combine a radionuclide with the pharmaceutical and these will also follow natural biological pathways. Once introduced into the body via intravenous injection, inhalation or ingestion, the radiopharmaceutical will accumulate in the target organ that we want to image. How much of a tracer accumulates is often a representation of the severity of disease. A specially designed camera called a gamma camera will capture the gamma emissions from the tracer and these emissions are used to form a diagnostic picture. But what happens after these images are taken? Well, the information provided by the diagnostic scan is used to tailor a treatment plan to suit you. The amount of radiation you receive can be affected by a wide variety of factors. These will include the radionuclide being used, the target organ, the disease being treated, and the severity of that disease. Radiation dose will also be affected by a patient's age. Young children who are still growing require a much smaller dose than a fully grown adult. A person's gender can also influence the dose as people with different reproductive organs have different tolerances to radiation. Finally, the dose is also affected by body size. Smaller people require less radiation. Once a personalized treatment plan has been set, therapy can begin. You will be given your therapeutic radiopharmaceutical and it will accumulate in the same target organ as a diagnostic radiopharmaceutical. This treatment will use either beta or alpha particles to deliberately cause damage to the cells of the target organ. This will treat your underlying disease. So how does radiation actually kill cells? Well, that will depend on where a cell is in its life cycle. Cells move through different stages in their life cycle with certain stages being more radiosensitive than others. The G1 phase is when the cell is just living, growing and doing its thing and it is moderately resistant to radiation. In the S phase, DNA replication begins in anticipation of creating new cells and it has a high resistance to radiation. In the G2 phase, the cells continue to grow and again are fairly radio resistant. The cells, however, are most sensitive to radiation damage when they are dividing through the stage called mitosis. Ideally, the cells would be irradiated when all cells are in mitosis, but that is not always possible. Cancer cells reproduce very rapidly. This means that we have a much greater chance of irradiating the cells when they are at their most sensitive. Radiation will damage many parts of the cells. However, the target for therapy is always the DNA. Damage to the DNA will either kill the cells or damage them enough to stop them replicating. This will allow your body to fight the disease. How does radiation cause damage? The different types of radiation were briefly explained in video one. Therapy commonly uses a type of radiation called beta particles. Beta particles are good for therapy because they have a high linear energy transfer. What this means is that they deliver their dose over a short distance. This means that it only damages target cells and spares normal tissue. People who have never heard of Theranostics often have a lot of questions. Here are some of the more common questions that are asked by people such as yourself. I thought radiation caused cancer, not killed it. Technically, yes. 
there is a small chance of developing cancer from the radiation received. Just like it's possible to say that you can develop skin cancer from walking out in the sun without a hat. However, your doctor would have weighed the benefits of becoming disease free against a small chance of potentially developing cancer. Therapy that uses radiation is specifically designed to be delivered in such a way that the risk is as small as possible. Normal cells are able to replicate and heal much faster than cancerous cells, so radiation is often administered in several doses. You may need several cycles of Theranostics before you are considered disease free. Are there going to be things that I can't do after treatment? Your body excretes radiation in different ways and at different speeds, so this will change depending on your treatment. Radiation can be excreted in all bodily fluids such as urine, feces, sweat, saliva, semen or breast milk. As a result, you need to consider the following factors before a Theranostics procedure. The first one is pregnancy. If you are pregnant, or there is a chance you could be pregnant, your doctor will weigh up the risks and benefits of a Theranostics procedure with you. The second consideration is breastfeeding. If you are actively breastfeeding, you will need to stop for the duration of the Theranostics procedure and you may instead have to express breast milk in preparation. This concludes video two. We have provided more detailed information about Theranostic procedures and we have hopefully answered some of the questions you may have had. In our next video, we will discuss how Theranostics is used to treat thyroid diseases and neuroendocrine tumors in more detail. Thank you.